Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a little bit of customer work here. We are working on this seven, 800 horsepower, five, nine. Um, we are still waiting on one of the rods, but this will be a factory rod, ARP rod bolts. Um, we will check obviously for bearing clearance. That's why they're just kind of laying there. We have a brand new set of Molly pistons. Uh, this is a late five, nine Molly P bearings for the rods and mains. We have a Molly top gasket set, which comes with the better head gasket. This crappy gasket will replace that. Um, and then the interstate may be lower if you can't tell by the M part numbers and also the oil cooler gaskets here. Uh, we already got the block measured. We already got it cleaned. Uh, it's very humid in Virginia lately, so we already got it kind of wd 40 up so we're gonna go ahead and start putting this together uh first step with any motor is going to be cleaning all the parts which you guys can see here we did already go through and clean them all we are reusing the cam and tappets uh it's what the customer wanted as well as the damper again what the customer wanted um and yeah it shouldn't be a terrible build we have arp rod bolts he did opt for factory main bolts and then we have a set of ARP 2000 head studs to cap it off there. So again, more of a budget build, but at the end of the day, we gotta do what we get paid to do. And I think this thing will still be a ripper for sure. Uh, we got, for those of you that always get confused, this is a 5.9. Five 5.9 nine. Five nine common rails have saddle jets and J jets. On the early 03s, these might be capped with a bolt and a bar that goes across and you use saddle jets again that is if it doesn't have these passageways in the piston or this notch is the easiest way if it has the notch it's j jets where you knock a plastic plug in and you run a j jet if the j jets are plugged and you run the saddle jet i always recommend replacing those uh, because they are plastic they can get hot brittle crack break and then you have a piston that's not getting the proper loop. To get to the part everybody wants to know, uh, New Performance Auto did the machine work on this. Uh, when the customer brought it to us, it had been machined by a different shop. The first thing I noticed, cross hatching was way too horizontal, which will cause a lot of ring sealing issues. Uh, so Steve fixed that. We also opened up the bores quite a bit. This one was like, came to us at like five, five and a half, which is fine at factory power level. But being a somewhat stock bottom end 5.9 and the customer wanting to drive a big single on it, um, we did open it up. I believe this one's sitting at right at 7,000 spits in the wall. For bearings, we're gonna try and shoot for right around two and a half, three thousandths on the rods. The crank right around three and a half, four thousandths on the mains. And uh, yeah, that's where we're setting this one up at. Again, factory cam, uh, factory tappets. The head's not getting ported, it just got better seats put in and I believe customer provided that so I, I really haven't looked too deep at it yet but it is surfaced and we're going back with a regular head gasket first thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and get the rings ground and then probably start working on the crank
Okay, so I apologize. The camera kind of stopped recording, but we used our ring grinder right there. We got our oil rings dropped right in right at like 18, 19. Our second ring dropped in at uh, 49. And then our top ring we ground to 26. Uh, I went a little bit bigger just because I know this truck's going to see some heat. It is a wide bowl, so we went a little bit bigger for that. Um, should be a very healthy street motor anyway, but we got that all done. Um, now what we're gonna do is put all of the pistons and rods together as assemblies, at least for the five that we have, um, and like get them all cleaned up, oiled, the final cleaning, you know, stuff like that. So I'm gonna go put on some gloves and then uh, I'll try to guys get you guys set up. It seems like this right here is a good viewing angle. You get to see the block and everything. So we'll get that done. Okay, so we are back. We got our mains and rods all measured. You guys saw us put all the piston rings on. <clears throat> then we got a little distracted with some customers picking up stuff, but we got our mains. I'm gonna go ahead and clean them, put the bearings in, and essentially get this crank dropped in here. So I'm gonna get you guys kind of set up in a spot where you can see. Uh, I apologize, we are a little crammed right now currently with three engines taken apart, but you know, what they say about being busy.
Okay, guys, that's going to be a wrap for tonight. We got the crank in. Um, all of our measurements done. Everything's clean. We have five of our six rods made it on. We're still waiting on rod bolts, which will be here Friday. But we got our rings ground. Everything kind of laid out. Uh, tomorrow we'll do the front timing case, rear timing, or rear uh, main seal housing, rear main seal. Probably put the oil cooler on. I just uh, forgot to get uh, the right stuff today at the store. So that's where we're going to leave off tonight. Uh, pretty good progress. Honestly, we got everything clean, ready to go, measured. That's half the battle, guys. Um, on any engine stock to 2,000 plus horsepower, the cleaning and measuring part is the most tedious. If you don't like that or find it interesting or relaxing, this is probably not a good job for you. Unless you're gonna do it once or twice, but if you're trying to make a living doing this, I find it like almost therapeutic to do it. So anyway, that's where she sits tonight, bagged up, ready to go. All this stuff will just sit in our clean room. No issues there. Cam sitting right there. I do need to take out this trash though, oh my goodness. But yeah, let's uh, pick this back up later. Back at it again, we're gonna get the lifters, the cam, pistons and rods thrown in this thing, pickup tube, oil pan, and get this thing ready for the cylinder head, which is laying right here. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna get you guys set up on a time lapse. I'm gonna get this done. Uh, my goal is to probably have the head on this, hopefully tonight. That way tomorrow it's easy work.
Okay, we got the rods all in, uh, torqued. These are getting ARP rod bolts, factory rod. Uh, so we'll be able to put the girdle in or block stiffener. Uh, and the pickup tube on these, it's pretty easy. I use red Loctite on all these bolts, torque them down. We're just using factory hardware. Again, pickup tube, just make sure you tighten these first and then check to make sure that these aren't yanking too hard on the tube. You don't want to crack that end over there. So I'll get this on and then we'll get the oil pan gasket, get the oil pan on, uh, rear main housing, obviously first, then oil pan, but yeah, we're making progress. And uh, next time you guys see it, we'll flip it over and start putting the head on. Okay, so you guys saw that molly box. Look what head gasket came in there. Still a good gasket. Uh, got the oil pan on and torqued, but we'll get his head tossed on here now. To do that, I usually lift up the head, step up on the engine stand, and set it down. Probably not the best for my back, but I've had good luck with it. So let me get this head on. And then we'll start getting these head studs prepped and I'll clean up my mess trying to find all those oil pan bolts. And she is on. <clears throat> There's a lot of breath, but oh well. You guys already know the drill. Engine oil on the bottom of the stud. ARP lube on the top. Washer, nut. I'm going to get this done. I can't even tell you how many time lapses I've done of head studs. So there you go. Three torque sequences and we'll be ready to go. I will check back in with you guys once we're done. All right, guys, I had every intention of finishing this um, in one video, uh, but by the time you guys watch this, I will be on vacation with my wife and kids. I didn't want to leave you guys hanging, so I've really been busting my butt to make sure you guys had videos to watch while I'm gone. Um, I did just talk to the customer. Uh, we found the uh, push or the tips all broken off, which is extremely common on the 5.9 trucks. Uh, you guys can see there, I have them all. I said, hey, uh, it, it, I'll put it together like that. I said, but the first time you go to do like injectors, valve lash, these things love to pop out. Um, this is the version that had the plastic clips. Uh, we gave them the option. Uh, I told them, I said, find a set that's used on like fire pump for them or whatever. Uh, like use late six seven that is steel press fit. I, I don't care. I'm happy to do that uh, But we got his uh, rail ultrasonic clean put it down there. We uh, Got his oil filter oil cooler on uh, And yeah, we're gonna wait a little bit He's thinking about maybe doing some push rod upgrades because we found that one of his stock ones was a little bent um, so rather than leave you guys hanging while I'm on vacation, I figured I'd end this video here again. This was a 700, 800 horsepower. I'm not going to say stock bottom end five, nine, but a mostly stock. Uh, he did opt for the rod bolts, which I think should be a no brainer, uh, to anyone. So I'm really happy that he went with that. We did do the ARP two thousands with a surface head surface block which should hold quite a bit of power. I believe he's running a single turbo. So um, that, and there's a couple of parts that he forgot to drop off. No big deal. I, like I told him, I said, we'll just wrap this up, put it in a corner. And then once he, once we get back, once he brings me the parts, we'll finish this off. I will update you guys kind of probably not walk you through any more of it, but it's pretty simple. All you're going to do CB3 gear, oil pump, water pump, case uh cover put your cp3 on intake plenum rocker arms push rods injectors connecting tubes exhaust manifold like you're, you're there so again not bad uh we just went with black and once we put it all together i will paint all this black as well including this front cover and this rocker box uh will all be black but Anyway, guys, hopefully you like this video. Um, again, this is a seven, 800 horsepower, mostly stock five, nine. We opened up the clearances for him. Um, and I think it'll, it'll do just fine. I think he'll enjoy it. And I think we came in at a price point that he likes. Um, and yeah, we, if you have a Cummins motor and you want to build it, stuff like that, let me know. 
Uh, full disclosure, if you guys come at me with some wild stuff, I usually do give a little bit of a sarcastic answer um, just because I don't want to build a 1600 horsepower 12 valve daily driver motor. I don't want to build a 2500 horsepower street truck motor, stuff like that. Um, there's just a lot and it's hard for people to just jump in that. Um, personally, unless you have a ton of money or a great team behind you jumping into some of these projects like if you can afford the startup costs that's great can you afford the maintenance that's where it really starts to become an issue so hopefully you guys like this video drop your comments down below subscribe if you are not already and as always guys i'll catch you all in the next one